Welcome back to the channel. Ted told me we were doing that. Uh, today we're tasting something very fun and nice and wonderful, and not something I've ever seen a review done on. At I've least never seen not a on YouTube. Done. Not saying it hasn't been done. Just saying I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. It's probably been done a hundred times. But Brian. today we are tasting Kings County cast strength, yes. barrel strength, 128 proof, and uh, they claim to be New York's oldest whiskey distillery. I think it actually is New York's oldest distillery. Freaking fantastic. We got this in Culver City, by the way. And he's Brian, and I'm Matt, and we're the Whiskey Wimps. <laughs> looks like an old medicine bottle from like the 50s yeah. which is probably what it was at one point i I'm, mean you remember back in when it was you know prohibition like yeah yeah they have like I mean, a, even the cork even the, the stopper on here looks it does it, it's traditional super cool very unassuming bottle i i like the way it looks um i mean i think what's unique about this bottle is there's no rye in the mash bill right Right, zero rye in this mash bill. It's 80% corn, 20% malted barley, and I believe it's Scottish malted barley. Like this. I think they even like put on the label here is the corn is New York corn and the rye is from the UK. Yeah, so Scottish, uh, in four years or more, so it's a straight whiskey, straight bourbon whiskey because it's mm -hmm. still more than 51% corn. You don't have to have rye in your bourbon whiskey. Don't have to. Don't have it's to. It's got to be the corn. It's got to mm -hmm. be in there. Um, so, and I think they put this in some kind of... Uh, a different type of I don't remember what type of still they use for this, honestly, but New let's York give it still. a try, dude. Let's give it a go. Now remember when we bought this ball, the guy said that this was actually they don't usually get this one in the store. Oh, they got it by mistake. Exactly. And my mistake was not going back to that store to get another bottle and thinking I can order it online. And then the online company told me, just kidding, we're not sending it to you. So I hadn't stopped by the store and by the time Matt went to go back and try to get me a bottle of it, they were gone. <laughs> so hopefully you can find this because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty good. I mean, I've had it before. That was kind of weak, but oh, it was really good with the cigar, wasn't it? Oh, with the cigar, this was freaking dream come true, dude. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But if you're not having a cigar, you can still have it neat, first straight, thing. however you like it. Just enjoy it with friends, family, loved ones, or non-loved ones, like what I'm doing here today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that good, huh? Yeah, I you love this. Some thickness right there, dude. Oh yeah, because this is high proof stuff. We are now stepping up our game this month. One twenty eight. Whoa. One twenty eight. Mm. Mm. That's what I lift on the bar, folks. Weak sauce. <laughs> like bench press? I was, that was a joke. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. I would be kicked out of the gym if I <laughs> if I did that. Very corn heavy. Corn heavy. Mm -hmm. Corn heavy. Corn heavy with your book, a book. Corn heavy, corn heavy. See, I can definitely like, I can see myself having this like with a like a Mexican style dinner. Mm, oh yeah, it is corn heavy. I like corn heavy whiskey. So do I. I. I really do. Like even my rise, I like heavy corn. You know, mm -hmm. they're just there's something about that corn, man. It's that it's American as corn. I guess, like you say, American yeah. as apple pie. I think that corn is more American than pie at this point. I would agree with you on that. Apples, don't you think? I would agree with you. I mean, think about what are they? Where do the, all the politicians have to go to? Like, you know, like to pander to when they're trying to get elections. They go to Iowa, right? Yeah. There's a lot of corn farming out there. And potatoes. And potatoes, but definitely corn. Like, corn is a huge part of American industry. I know. Whiskey included. So let's see what we get off the nose. Then. Definitely corn heavy. Like caramel corn. Like like Cracker Jack. Oh, yeah. I can box of Cracker Jacks. Good call on that one. And there's a little like, I'm getting this, like um, maple syrup. Yeah, I was gonna say something a little more sharp, like mm -hmm. sharper than Cracker Jack. The Cracker Jack's a very soft nose uh -huh. thing, you know, with all the caramel and, and yeah, the maple syrup with a little bit more of that little slight spice that you get from yeah. maple. Mm -hmm. It smells viscous. It smells like it's oh. gonna just freaking coat the entirety of my mouth for like 30 minutes. This is. A this is one of these bottles that, you know, I honestly would have passed up because know nothing about it. Looks very unassuming. Just, I think what it was a ninety dollar bottle, something like that. Yeah, well, yeah, eighty, ninety, yes. Yeah, I honestly probably if you didn't talk me into it, and you had bought a bottle from the other store that we were at Culver City, and I wanted to kind of keep up the game. That's why I bought this one. But sometimes these, you know, 
ones that have the, are very unassuming, could be masterpieces. <laughs> about I think a lot of things Brian what do you what do you think about like like if you had a choice if you had a choice okay and you had to choose between drinking blind mm -hmm. for the rest of your whiskey drinking career or having the bottle and knowing what you're drinking <sighs> to choose between that surprise to where you don't have any stigma from the the bottle look the bottle mm -hmm. shape the price that it costs like the allocation or not, you know, how available it is, like how hard it is to find any right. of that. Like without, like, would you rather just drink and, and go for straight flavors and have none of that input from? No, that's a very, it's a very good question. Cause the, you know, I, I do like knowing that I've gotten a, a rare bottle and I'm tasting something that's not very available to everyone. Kind of feel a little, uh, you know, pride in, in drinking something pretty prestigious. Sinner. Yes, <laughs> I am one. But then I like being surprised of what I'm, you know, I'm tasting. That way I don't know who the distiller is at all. I don't, I'm not expecting a certain mash bill. I can go in unassumingly and try to pick out the different notes. Yeah, I know that there's definitely, it's a tough question to, mm -hmm. to answer. But could you, could you pick? Could you choose? So you have to choose. What I have to pick? choose. I would honestly go in blind. Okay. Yeah. Just How about you? straight experience. I mean, I, I really like knowing what I'm tasting, but to your point, like it's also great to kind of not to not assume anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, the reasons are solid, and that's why mm -hmm. uh, that's why I think to your point, I think it is a, so, def, a solid question. Because what what would you pick if you had to just choose one to stick with it? I think I would probably go with with knowing what it was. With knowing, yeah, knowing what it was and having the bottle. There's there's a huge part of the experience for me that is the bottle and like mm -hmm. what it looks like the shape like knowing where it came from the whole backstory behind it and not just like the drinking experience is great like it's always great almost every time um i love you know being able to think and about the flavors without having the stigma of what it is actually but th it's such a huge it is a huge part for me I would, I would want to know like the fact that it's such an unassuming bottle in this case like makes me appreciate it even more that it's so amazing right it's such amazing uh, amazing uh distillate and and Spirit. I mean, I love the way this bottle is. I'm, I'm planning on keeping the bottle out of this after I'm done. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this content, drop a thumbs up and help support our channel. Just a simple little click on the thing. It'll it'll get us out to more viewers, which means we can make more of this content and more, more high quality, put more time into it. And uh, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you know the next time we're uploading. Because once we get to 1,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing a live stream with this bottle. I mean, we've saying this every week, but we haven't hit a thousand subscribers yet. So <laughs> until we hit a thousand, we're going to keep harping we're on this. Keep uh, this bottle of Remus Repeal Reserve 5 is going to be sitting here unopened, unopened until we hit a thousand subscribers. So bam, bam, bam. There it is. Bam, bam, bam. And then once we start doing live streams, we'll continue to do more giveaways on the channel. Just because exactly. a big part of whiskey is like getting to share it, right? Like, exactly. That's and also part. like commenting, comment below. Tell us what you would do. Would you rather know what you're drinking and see the bottle? Or would you rather be blind and... Just being blind, I almost fell off the end of the thing. <laughs> I went rolling down the hill. I gotta fix my platform, dude. I'm well, your your start your your spot is starting to fall apart. It is. It's because I'm on the falling side of the hill. You're on the up. You're on the uphill part. I'm on the downhill part. Like I I'm, know. I built a platform. Like in life. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm I mean, rising and you're falling. Maybe. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, it's dark. Yes, it's heavy. I mean, that's that's a dark note. That's almost like mine is still finishing. I still I feel it going all the way down. Oh yeah, yeah. It's definitely it's definitely a lingerer. Mm -hmm. But it, it kind of reminds me of, which makes sense. It reminds me a little bit of of Balconis. Like, damn it, I was gonna say that. Except like some Garrison Brothers too, or something. something. I was gonna say Balconis because Balconis is also very corn 
heavy as well. Yeah, yeah. Most of the Belconis is with that blue corn. Right. And the. Uh, it doesn't have the blue corn taste though. No, it doesn't have that savoriness to it. No. Right? right. There's not. There's not the savory note that you get from the blue corn, but it's like also those things in Texas coming from Belconis, like they got that huge fluctuation in temperatures there in Texas. You know, they, they get higher temperatures than right. a lot of places that. Well, New York doesn't really have that high fluctuation. Could be from the massive cold that they get. The massive what? The cold winters. Hmm. Okay. I'm just assuming. I mean, I mean, Texas uh, will get the the up in the the hot temperatures, and New York's going to get that those sharp cold temperatures as well. Never been to Kings County, but it's uh. Neither have I. That might be a a trip. It's almost too much. It's almost too much. Like like I, too, the first time I had it. The only time I had it besides this was with the cigar. Yeah. Like. It's almost too much. It's almost too much. Like, I almost need the cigar, I think, to, like, beat back some of the... Hmm. Like, this really tastes like... There's a part of this that tastes like medicine. It tastes like corn medicine. And it could be the bottle imparting itself on me and the fact that it looks like a medicine bottle from the 50s or 40s. But... See, there's a sweetness to this, too. If you... It hits the tiny on, on the back end of the palate. Oh, it's definitely sweet. Yeah, like, I'm mm-hmm. talking, like... It's like if Robitussin met corn syrup. See, I don't find corn syrup very, like, sweet. Talking about, this is literally corn syrup. No. Nah. I mean, not nah. literally corn syrup, but it's it's corn sugars that have been eaten by yeast and turned into alcohol. Thank you, yeast. But I do love this bottle. Yeah. Well, you're welcome for forcing you to buy it. Thank you. Or for really highly encouraging you to buy it. I, I didn't force you. I didn't take your money out of your wallet and say, he's buying this bottle. Thanks. I didn't go that far. You didn't go that far, but you were a definite <laughs> persuasion. <laughs> if you didn't do it, I may have gone that far. I've been like, Matt, 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 let me see your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that lesson, never give Brian my wallet. I've learned my lesson, never give Matt my wallet, unless I wanted to get auctioned off at a freaking charity <laughs> auction for snakes. If you can find this ball, I definitely recommend picking it up. And I also rec- recommend having it with like a, a really dark cigar, too. Something with some oh, yes. cigars and deep notes. A full like cigar. A, like a full body cigar, like a Liga Pravada T52 or number nine. Uh, I had the Placentia 148B. That one was really good with this. I think any any full body cigar with this whiskey right here is gonna be beautiful. Beautiful. Oof. Ah, ah yes. Indeed. Yes, perfect. Because everything ooh, <laughs> is better with whiskey. And peer pressure. I can't choose an empty glass. 